think there's an afterlife? Nah. So you don't believe what the Bible says about the afterlife? I truly haven't sat down and researched it, but I don't really know that it talked about afterlife. And I was born and raised with Jehovah's Witness. But I mean, at the end of the day, people have their own opinions, but they should really get the research, 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 because people, a lot of people just say things out of the, out of nowhere, and they don't even know what they're talking about just because somebody else said it. So, what's the difference between Jehovah's Witnesses and Christianity? I really wouldn't know exactly the difference, but they do have something in common. They believe in one God. It's just two different groups that believe in different things, like Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate holidays. Which I agreed because it's just it's just something that just keeps things going and flowing, you know. It's no big deal, but your salvation's not dependent on whether or not you celebrate Christmas or birthdays, etc. So how can how can someone get to heaven? I mean, if you were if you're going to die at midnight tonight, you'd probably research, 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 if you knew that was going to happen. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. So tell me, how can I make it to heaven? Let's pretend there's a knife in my back and I'm dying. And I say to you, Ryle, I'm dying. I'm scared of dying. I don't want to go to hell. How can I make it to heaven? What would you say to me? I think from the day you're born and the process where you live and your parents teach you what's right and what's wrong, then that's how you work your process to go. I've got three minutes to live. I'm to two minutes now. Help me out. I don't know, man. I'm not God. So you can't help me? I could pray for you, you know. I could... Babe. Wish you the best, but I mean, if you're already gonna die, then. So there's no hope that Jehovah's Witnesses can give me to be saved and make it to heaven if I've got one and a half minutes to live, which I have. Well, I can't. I can't say yes or no, you know, because I, I wouldn't be the right person to say that. Okay, so let's say there's a knife in your back and you're dying and you're scared. Uh, this is what I'd say to you, Ryle. You think you're a good person? I think I am. Actually, I think I am. How many lies have you told in your life? Trillions, but just because a lie doesn't make me a bad person. Have you ever stolen something? Once. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Uh, Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Unfortunately, all the time. Have you, have you had sex out of marriage? Yes. So, Ryle, I'm not judging you, but you've just told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating adulterer at heart. And you're self-righteous because you think you're a good person and you're not. So here's the big, the big question. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments, we've looked at four of them, on the Day of Judgment, you're going to be innocent or guilty? I don't think I'll make it to heaven. You'll end up in hell? I don't believe in hell. I know that, but, the, but Jesus said this. He said, Fear not him who has power to kill your body and afterwards can do no more, but fear him who has power to kill your body and cast your soul into hell. Fear him. He also said, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it's better to enter heaven without an eye than go to hell with both your eyes. And the Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. So you're in big trouble, huh? I guess, but the thing about God is that he's very merciful. And not only that, but he doesn't judge you on one thing that you messed up at. You told one lie or was it a trillion? A trillion, but... So it's not just one thing. You've drunk iniquity like water. You've got a multitude of sins like the rest of us. So don't try and justify yourself. Just say, <laughs> just say this. What should I do? And there's something that can be done because of what God's already done. When Jesus suffered and died, he took the punishment for the sin of the world. You and I broke God's law, the Ten Commandments. Jesus paid the fine. If you're in court and someone pays your fine, the judge can let you go. Even though you're guilty, you can say, well, you're guilty, but someone's paid your fine, you're out of here. Never seen it in that perspective. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Even though you're guilty, the judge can say, you're out of here. And he can do that which is legal because the fine is paid by another. Well, God can legally let you live because of the death and resurrection of the Savior. Just before Jesus died, he cried out, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. That means God can freely forgive your sins. He can wash you clean, dismiss your court case, commute your death sentence, and let you legally live forever, all because of the suffering death of the Savior. What you have to do to find everlasting life is repent exactly. and trust in Him. Repentance can't save you on its own. It's like saying to a judge, I'll never commit the crime again. He'll say, so you shouldn't. But what saves you is trusting in Jesus, like putting on a parachute. Will you at least think about this? Oh, yes, I will. Do you have a Bible? Yeah. 
It's not a Jehovah's Witness Bible, is it? Really quick, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our YouTube channel where we post two new encouraging videos every single day. We also have many more resources available on livingwaters.com. Thank you so much. There, what's a New World Translation says you can yes. earn eternal life, but, but the Bible says it can't be earned because it's a gift. Look, if I gave you a, a brand new car, and I said, Raul, well, I love you, I'm going to give you a car as a gift, brand new, and you flip me 10 cents, it's not a gift, it's a purchase. Isn't it? You've, you've got a good deal. And you can't give God anything in exchange for eternal life. There's nothing you can do. All you can do is receive the gift. And that's what I'm saying to you today. So I, thank, I want to thank you for listening to me. It's been gracious of you. And I, I trust that you will seriously think about this because you don't know when you're going to die. Okay? Hey, thanks a lot, man. You kind of put a little beam for me to wake up. Well, I hope it's a big beam. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll wake up real soon. Great to talk to you, man. Hey, thanks a lot, bro. Thank you. Have a good one.